Good morning. How are you? Good to be back here with you. I had to do it through at the movies, which was still fun. Uh, but I got to watch myself, which is weird, you know. But uh, And welcome if you're joining us online. We're glad you're back with us. Of course, during at the movies, we weren't able to show that for, um, for legal reasons. But we're certainly glad you're joining us with today's service. We... Um, uh, this is an important service for us. We call it Legacy Sunday. So what we do, we started last year and uh, after at the movies, but before kind of our Christmas series uh, begins, we do this special service called Legacy Sunday. And I want to talk to you a little bit about it, why we do it. Um, you've been getting some information about it for really for right four or five weeks. We've been talking to you about it, asking you to be prayerful about it. So we'll talk about that. What I want to do today is just talk about three things. One, it's just some dates, uh, some things I want you to be aware of. Two, we'll talk briefly about Legacy Sunday. And then three, I want to just talk to you about what you can give God this Christmas. So we are going to kind of do a little bit of that. It's kind of a shorter message, though. So let's talk about that. First of all, it's some important dates. So if you have a calendar in your phone, you'll want to pull that out so that you know this information. We'll try to keep this on the website too. So if you ever want to know current information about what's happening at Vineyard, you can go to vineyardchurch.com. But we are going to be doing two Christmas Eve services. We did a little survey with some people and said, hey, what would be a good time? So uh, if you got that survey, these are the times that most people chose. So that's why we ended up doing it. A side note, of course, this is a Saturday. And so uh, since we're doing a lot for Christmas Eve services, the prayer service that we normally we do every, every Saturday, we won't do that. We will be just doing our Christmas Eve services, okay? Those are the times, 4 and 5.30. Now, every once in a while, Christmas lands on a Sunday. And uh, churches often have a hard time knowing what to do. Like, oh no, do we meet? If we don't meet, are we going to hell? I mean, what's, you know, what's, what's happening, you know, if we don't, and it's always on the news, they're interviewing pastors, why did you do that, you know, I haven't been interviewed yet, which is fine with me, you know, on that, but we, we like to put our dream teamers first, they work real hard throughout the year, they work real hard to help put on this, this, what we do on Sunday morning wouldn't happen without our dream teamers. And so we like to uh, say, why don't you stay home with your families on Christmas Day when it lands on a Sunday like it is this year. Uh, but we are going to, Sharon and I are going to do an online uh, service, uh, just a brief message, uh, and you can, it'll drop on Sunday morning, on Christmas morning. So in the morning, if you want, you can just do it, uh, a little family devotional, just uh, go to vineyardchurch.com, you'll see it right there, it'll be real obvious. And uh, it won't be real long. It's not a full service. Just, you know, 15, 20 minutes of Sharon and I just talking a little bit about the Christmas story and making it a, a, a Christmas devotional. So that's, that's, that's what's coming up. New Year's Day, uh, just this is a side note, uh, of course, lands on a Sunday too. And, uh, but we will be having our services. In fact, we're going to kick off our prayer series. We like to do 21 days of prayer and fasting during uh, the, uh, at the beginning of a year. And so we're going to actually, this year, we're going we're gonna to back it up and begin talking about prayer and the value of prayer. Listen, whatever you want God to bless in your life, you put him first in that, in that area. And so that's why we want God's blessing on our church. We want God's blessing on our lives. Uh, no better way to begin the year than by putting God first in prayer. So you can write this in, prayer and fasting, January 8th through the 28th. Now, fasting is usually not, if you're new to that, it's just like, why would I do that? You know, I like to eat. Why? Well, don't, don't, don't touch my food, pastor. You know, but what we're asking you to do is uh, probably not eat something. You know, maybe, we're not saying fast for the whole time. We're saying fast something. You know, and so when people fast, we'll talk more about it when it gets closer, but, you know, some people fast, you know, chocolate, some people fast caffeine, whoa, I know I'm getting close now, but, you know, but, you know, some people it's not even food, it is social media or something, but you're taking something of the world that's in your life, it's not necessarily bad, it's just you're putting that aside for, for 21 days, and you're saying, I'm going to separate myself from the world for this period of time, and that kind of turbocharges your prayer life. I can really, really connect in closer with God during that time. So that's the purpose of that. 
And uh, uh, we want you to be thinking about that. Also, we have a marriage conference. We actually started this last year. It was great. If you came, we just heard great feedback. We're doing it again this year. Uh, we are, we're already putting it together. It's, gonna be, it's just going to be insane. It's going to be so good. So if you're married or you're dating and you're thinking of getting married, I think you would get a lot out of this. I encourage you to come. Uh, over the years, I've talked to people that, that you know, they're, they're married. They go, oh, yeah, we don't need to work on our marriage. We're fine. In fact, I've, I've heard some people say, you know, if, if it gets any better, we will, you know, we'll, I guess we'll just die. You know, and I, I, they're not dead, but they're divorced. You know, I guess it got better, you know. So listen, the law of entropy says that if you ignore something, it gets worse. It degrades. So we are always needing to make deposits in things that are important to especially relationships, especially uh, something like marriage. It's so important. Listen, when you get married, when you get married, you know, the enemy wants, you know, you're, you get a bullseye on you, and he wants to try to divide you, harass you, all kinds of stuff. So we, 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 right up front, and that's kind of the, you know, right around, you know, Valentine's Day. We're kind of getting ahead of that. You know, get, hey, be thinking of that. So these are some things that we want you to have in your calendar. Now I want to talk, as I said, I was going to talk about three things. Secondly, I want to talk about Legacy Sunday. What it is. Well, we call it Legacy Sunday because it is about leaving a legacy. A legacy is what people remember about you. Uh, what they say about you while you're living, but particularly, you know, in this thing called life, which feels long when you're young. As you get older, you realize it's not as long as I thought. And compared to eternity, it's actually kind of short. So what are we going to do that we... What are we going to be remembered for? And the Bible says, those who are righteous, not perfect, those who are righteous, in other words, you're, you're pursuing God, will be remembered forever. So as we pursue God, we do things that leave a legacy. Now, there's different ways of leaving a legacy. Some people, they, when they think about leaving a legacy, they think about, i got to have a will. And in my will, I'll divide it equally between my kids. And... There's nothing wrong with, with that, right? I mean, taking, having a will, taking care of your kids, but having a focus where it's just your kids, just your grandkids, as important as they are. As Christ followers, we're called to have a bigger vision than that. We're supposed to be reaching our communities and the world and helping to make a difference in their lives. So we want to be thinking, how can I leave a legacy that not, is beyond just my kids and my grandkids, but is, is forever, impacts people's eternities. And so that's what it means to be a Christ follower. And, and if we just fall into our default, most people, they just think, oh yeah, just my kids. No, no, there's something bigger than that. That's why legacy, we talk, it's just, it's, we say, hey, let's think something bigger, grander than just the immediate you know, taking care of ourselves and, and being remembered for something bigger. So for, for us, we have three lanes, three, three ways that we want to impact people and, and, and make a difference in their lives. One is through our internships. We have vineyard internships and we have scholarships to help people go through those. That's investing in our young people, in our next generation, specifically people that want to go into professional ministry. They're, they're pursuing, hey, maybe God has this for me in my future. Now, listen, if in most public schools and in, and, and, and different, different arenas, when people are deciding about career choices, uh, going into professional ministry is usually not pushed. You know, that's not usually like, hey, this is a viable thing you should think about. It's just like, well, yeah, if you're like a loser, you know. I mean, no, who, who wants that? So, but, but honestly... When God chooses somebody to do professional ministry, it's a big thing. And he chooses from the body of Christ. I mean, that's, if you're not a believer, that's not an option for you, right? That's the, you do need to choose a different career. But as a Christ follower, now that's one of the things that, particularly young people, they need to be thinking about, God, is this a pathway for me? It might not be. That's fine. 
but they need, every, I think every young person should at least pray through that. God, is this a, is this a pathway for me? And we help them sort through that in our, in, our, in our internship. They come alongside us. They work with us. We're prayerful about them. You know, we're helping them figure that out. Is this part of my pathway? And in the process, we've had a number of them decide, yes, this is what God has for me. And we've hired some of them. And we've sent some of them out to, to be hired by other churches and other other, other parachurch organizations, missionaries, all kinds of things. I, I, we got up with one of our interns that went through our internship program. We asked her, hey, why don't you share a little bit about to our congregation about your experience? Because some of you might not be uh, aware of, of this lane, this, this legacy lane. And so I want you to listen to her real short. This is Deanne and her experience with Vineyard Internship. Hi, my name is Deanne Mendoza. I had the opportunity to intern here at Vineyard Church in the fall of 2022. Interning here has been a fantastic experience. While pursuing a communications degree at Regent University, I was able to apply my degree within the ministry and everything that God does here at Vineyard Church. Each week, I got to meet with amazing leaders with different spiritual gifts. I worked alongside pastors and staff to gain more insight into building a discipleship model and agenda for the ministry that I served in. I also got to practice and build my leadership skills by serving in the youth ministry, and I had the privilege to lead students closer to Christ. My internship experience has allowed me to step out of my comfort zone and step into God's purpose and plan for my life. Isn't that great? Yeah. And there's, a, there's many stories like that of people that uh, are, are sorting through what God's doing. And we're, we get a chance to invest in that. And listen, when somebody decides to walk into professional ministry and they're that young, they have decades and decades talking about leaving a legacy. Think of all the people they will impact and touch over, the, over that period of time. So we're, we're, we're real passionate about it. We love our legacy lane uh, for uh, the internship. Secondly, we do missions. Missions is an important part of what we do. Now, if you hear, if you think of missionaries, uh, a lot of times we think of people that like are in foreign missions, you know, they, they, they go somewhere in a different continent or a different country, and that is missions. But missions also is, actually begins here. Jesus talked about it when he said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and then he goes into the outermost parts of the world. So it, it encompasses the whole thing. And so we have local missions. Uh, some of what we do uh, is we have our food pantry. That's a way of reaching our community uh, and, and helping, the, helping them in need. We have 2,100 people that we've, that we've, that we've helped uh, this past year. We, we partner with s s some uh, organizations that are doing some amazing things. One of them is Judea Christian Outreach Center. They work primarily with the homeless down at the ocean front, but we partner with some organizations. We do, one of the things we do is our Thanksgiving meals. We just did, and we had 75 families that, were, that, that came up, and here's a couple of photos from just a few weeks ago uh, where we're able to help them and give them gifts, give them food, uh, make that Thanksgiving and the holiday season amazing. Uh, uh, we, of course, do the angel tree. We have serve day where we, have, uh, where we help out hundreds of people and touch them in different ways. And it's just, that's, that's missions, but it's local missions. But it's beyond that. We also do, uh, our, our primarily where we go is Mexico, in Mazatlan, Mexico, uh, for, uh, for our uh, uh, foreign missions or, what, you know, global missions. And where we have kids that are sponsored, uh, helping them. A lot of kids are, it, it, where we tend to go, if you've been there, you know, but if you've not been there, we go uh, to places of abject poverty, the poorest of the poor, really worldwide. Uh, it, it, I mean, just, there's some incredibly poor areas and they've been neglected by the government. They have, they have very, they have almost nothing. They have lean-tos and there's, we bring doctors with us and nurses. We bring medical care. We help them out with them. Um, we help the pastors that are leading those churches by doing some conferences for them. We, we, we give uh, uh, shoes that are, each, each year we bring suitcases full of shoes, meals, hygiene bags to people that work in the dump. One of the places we go to is the city dump. There's places, people that just live off of the trash and the dump of other people in Mexico. And then uh, we partner with uh, uh, Convoy of Hope, which Convoy of Hope uh, primarily helps out with national and international disasters. 
And so these are some of the places where we help out in that second lane. So we have the first lane, which is our internships. The second lane, which is our missions. And then the third lane is a new capital improvements. So we've done a few of those. We bought this building in 2000, and then we, uh, we had to pay it off because we try to, as much as we can, uh, pay things with cash and not get into a lot of debt. We're currently debt free. Uh, and then uh, we had a couple different, <laughs> that, is, that is awesome, right? Especially in nowadays. But uh, then we had a couple renovations that we did in part in pieces. And then, but one thing we never was able to, to accomplish was our elevator, which we really need uh, for people that uh, have disabilities, elderly, different people that need to get upstairs for the programming that we have up there. And then really that kind of goes along with, an, with the lobby. They're kind of part and parcel. And so we need, we need that piece to come together. Uh, if you were here when we did some of those other renovations, you know, there was a fair amount of inconvenience. It's, it's not like it just happens in a day. Uh, and that's our entry. So we're talking about people, you know, we're going to figure out ways people flow to come in through uh, where the food pantry is, coming through the office, these doors here. We've done it before. We'll make it happen. But we do need you to be flexible. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken. You know? <laughs> That's, that's not in the Bible, but it's, it's good to remember during a renovation, you know. <laughs> uh, but we'll probably have a tent in the parking lot or something. We'll, we'll figure it out. That's all coming. But let me show you uh, what, we, what we have planned. Uh, we've been planning this for a while. One of the snags was the city. The city had their own set of rules that they make up. And, and it's true. And we thought... They're just like making this stuff up. It makes no sense at all. And, and, and we, so we had people praying, you know, but one of the things they were going to do is, is to, create, to add that lobby, they were going to make us buy swamp land in Florida. Now you'd think, come on, it's true. It's part of this, you know, if you create, if you, if you, cre if you build on something, they say, well, you have to offset it with land that's dedicated and will never be developed on, which, so these people that, you know, got bought all that swamp land. I guess they're getting rich now. I don't know. Anyway, so we prayed. The city finally realized, oh, that's stupid. And so they waived all of it. So that was good. So we don't have any of that. So uh, our architect is working with us. And, and, and we're trying to keep it small and simple. We don't want something expensive. But we need something functional that looks nice. So he, uh, we've been working with him kind of back and forth for the last few months, and I kind of put this deadline on him. I said, Legacy Sunday, I need it done. So uh, we have some drawings, but that's hard to read sometimes. So I asked him, can you do something in 3D? So he, and I said, and for free, I don't want to pay anything for it. And so, so, so what you have, I'm going to show you four, four 3D photos, but remember, they were done for free. So I'm happy about that. But here they are. So as you come in, this would be the new entry. Uh, not necessarily the sign, but the rest of it's pretty much what it's going to look like. We wanted it to match the other buildings so it doesn't look like two different buildings. We'll have brick that matches it just like that. The entry will be from Expressway Drive, not from the, from the parking like, lot like it is now. Uh, there'll be either a, you know, a patio here or a, a little garden or something like that, but that's uh, but we have two entryways that you come in. Once you come in the door, if you look to the right, what you will see is our cafe that we'll have there. We'll have um, some storage. We have to have storage, so that's some of that storage. To the right of that is storage. To the left of that is actually our elevator. Our elevator doors will open uh, towards the north side, which is where we're at now. So that's why you don't see that. But that's where the elevator will be. This big glass building over here, I don't Am I, I'm not doing a good job pointing because you're looking up there. But anyway, so I got to walk through it. The, on, the, on the far, on the, nor, on the, uh, on the right-hand side, there's that big wall. That, it looks like it's glass that goes nowhere. Um, that was the free part. Uh, it's actually supposed to be an LED wall. So it'll look really nice. Uh, you know, an LED wall will be able to communicate real well with, with all the things we want to communicate uh, and, uh, and if we want to show a movie or anything like that, it would, it would be there. And then uh, a high ceiling. Uh, then to the left of the vineyard sign, which is where the elevator is, to the left of that is a family bathroom, which we don't have a family bathroom, and we need that. So we're going to have a family bathroom there, and on top of that, to utilize that real estate well, we'll put a little balcony that where some chairs can be seated, 
and then it actually curves out. That balcony continues on. Let me show you. It continues on. You can see it. It actually goes into some stairs. So we'll have, we're going to move our stairway over there. Makes it a lot more accessible, more visible uh, to have a stairwell that goes up there. Uh, and the current stairwell that we have, which is a little scissor stairwell, that we, we will take, get rid of that and create on the bottom floor a bathroom because it connects in with the women's bathroom there. All the plumbing will happen very easily. And then the other side of that would be storage. And we'd actually have the same thing upstairs as well. So we'll, have th we'll be able to add three family bathrooms uh, and, uh, and then some, some additional storage. So, and then from the bottom of the stairs, if you were going to look at it, uh, that's kind of what it would look like. Uh, the bottom of the stairs and kind of get a feel for it. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We're excited about it. Um, we have estimated uh, through our, our the builder we're going to be using, Hoy Construction. We used them for the previous uh, renovations we did here. They've said it'll be around, they're thinking around 700 to 750,000. Okay, so that's a fair amount of money. Uh, but we're doing a lot. The good news is we've been raising money for several years, and so we actually have $330,000, which is almost half. So we're real excited about that, that we have a, a, you know, a, a lot going towards it. And this will take, um, they probably, we're hoping they'll start in January, might start in February, and it's probably going to take, they said, a good probably eight months or more. So it's a, it's a chunk of time. Uh, to get that done. But so anyways, I'm bringing that to you. This is a third lane. Uh, we've asked each one of you to be prayerful about, you know, hey, God, what would you have me give? Uh, I don't want to be putting pressure on you. If you feel any pressure, I, I hope that's the Holy Spirit. Uh, but, but just pray, God, what do you want me to give? We, we do want everybody to be part of it. So it's not the amount. It's like every, we would, it would, it would really be great if everybody could do something. You know, not equal gifts, of, of course, but equal sacrifice. Everybody's saying, especially if this is your church, yeah, I, I want to I be part of this. I want to invest in this, okay? If you want to give towards any of those lanes, here's some ways that you can do it. One is, is of course, vineyardchurch.com uh, vineyard slash give. That takes you right to our website, a way to give there. A check. We're going to do uh, a pre-COVID offering. Back before COVID, we used to have buckets and do offerings. We're not going to go back to that, but for Legacy Sunday, it seemed we want to uh, make it easy for people to give. And some of you give through cash or check, so we'll do that at the end of the service. Or you can text 45777, and then some examples of what that would look like. If you text it to that number, the amount, you put VCC, and then the, the, the lane that you want to give towards. Okay, And then all of that would go straight there. Again, just whatever God puts on your heart. That's the, if you'd like to know more about our legacy team meeting, or, or what we do, we have, um, and that goes through all of, with all of our books, we have an open book policy. Uh, if you're interested in that, some people are really interested, they come in, we, we share all of our expenses, our income, everything that, that happens there. And specifically for legacy, we have reports on these three lanes, the money we're getting, what we're doing with it, how it's being spent, all of that. We'd love to give that to you if you're interested. We actually have printouts at the, if you want it at the end of the service, uh, come up and let one of, uh, one of the pastors or leaders know, and we'll be happy to give it to you. Uh, here's another, if you'd like to, if, if God has resourced you and you say, I want to be part of the legacy team uh, and, and, and helping uh, decide, you know, how, the, you know, the, the vision where we're going, where we're, what we're doing. Here's more information for you. We're going to do this uh, on January 8th here in the, in, in the beginning of the year uh, from 630 to 8. So you can learn more about the legacy team. We, you know, encourage you to uh, be prayerful about that as well. So that's number two. So I told you about some dates, told you about Legacy Sunday. Lastly, I want to just tell you a little bit about how you can give uh, a special gift to God. And really, I think this is described wonderfully in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew uh, talks about the birth of Jesus, but gives more real estate, more, he actually talks more about the wise men than he does the birth of Christ, uh, because the, there's something, I think, very significant about these wise men that are searching out for Christ. And so I want to just look at that real passage real briefly. You know, when we talk about the wise men or the magi, uh, there's, sometimes there's um, myths associated with that. Like sometimes people think that there's only three. 
because every nativity comes with three wise men, right? But the Bible never says there was three guys. It says, it says there were just wise people, wise men that came. And so they're, they usually traveled in caravans. There might have been 50. So I know that means that also, here's another myth, that, that they were even at the nativity. You know, they actually traveled from a long distance. The Bible indicates they were probably there like when Jesus was two. So they, they missed that whole event. So that means your nativity is wrong. But, but I don't want you to throw it out. Don't go home and say, it's chucking it in the trash. This isn't theological. No, no, no. You, it's, you know what? The spirit is there, right? You know, just, you know, just in your mind, you know, there's probably more, and uh, they came at a different time. But let's look at this. They were following a star. It's quite a fascinating story. It says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem. They first go to talk to Herod, and then he's trying to use them uh, in, 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 in malevolent ways, and so they ditch him. It says, from the eastern lands, and they arrive in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw a star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. So here they're following the star. These guys are probably uh, astrologers, they, you know, they're, they're looking at the stars all the time, and they travel, uh, you know, they're, they're like traveling, they, they not only see something that's unique, they're, they're let's go follow this, let's mean something. A, a year ago, I don't know if you heard about those, uh, the planets that aligned, it was a Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter, and they like aligned up, they were supposed to be super bright, and it happens only every hundred years, somebody told me about it, I thought, every hundred years, I guess I can't miss that. So I go out at sunset, this is about a year ago, right, right around this date. I go out to Mount Trashmore, hundreds of people are there, you know. Sun goes down, I don't see anything. Everybody's whining, no way we got tricked, and, uh, including me. So, you know, I leave and I think, well, that was kind of lame. Well, uh, you know, I didn't, maybe, it, maybe, it, maybe something later in the night, you know, happened, I don't know. Well, these guys here, they see this, this star and they think, this is unique. And it means something. And so they, enough, they go out of their way to pack up. They probably travel a thousand miles. Like I said, you know, this two-year trip of like, we're going to go see what in the world is going on. It says the wise men went their way. And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. So it did have meaning. There was something significant with it. And I think that there's something powerful with that. They entered the house and they saw the child with his mother, really a toddler, right? He's now two, Mary. And they bowed down and worshiped him. They, uh, then they opened their treasure chests and gave him these three gifts, right? Gold, frankincense, myrrh. Gold kind of symbolized his, his, his regalness, that he was a king, and that frankincense is deity, and the myrrh, his humanity. And so they foretold the life of Jesus in these three gifts. So I want to talk about three gifts that we can give. They're different gifts than those, but they're three gifts we can also give Jesus. What am I going to give Jesus? Have you ever had, do you have somebody in your life who like has everything and you got to get them a gift? It's challenging, right? They already have everything. If they need something, they can buy it themselves. And they're like some of the toughest people to get a gift for. Like, what do I give them? God has everything. He, you know, but he's not that hard. Actually, we, there's a way we, God wants something. And here it is. These three things we can give him. Number one, it blesses God when we look to him. When we put our hope in him. When we say, God, I'm going to give you my hope. It, it looks hopeless what I'm facing, but I'm going to trust you through this challenging situation. It says, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. Hope brings joy. When you don't have hope and you're facing a dark situation, there's not usually a lot of joy with that. And the truth is we need, um, we need a light in, in moments of darkness. When, when, sometimes in the darkest times is when we, when we need light, when we need uh, hope. And some of you are in that situation where you're, you're in, you're in a dark place. You're in a dark place. The Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. That's a promise 
for people that put their hope in Christ, that no matter how dark it gets, I'm not going to be overcome. I'm not going to be swallowed up in this. This is what it means to trust God. Say, I'm going to put my hope in you. You know, when, peop- when, when we have loved ones that die who are in Christ, the Bible says that we will grieve, certainly, but we grieve with hope, unlike the world. The world grieves without hope. I'll never see this person again. It's over. Woe is me. And the Bible says, certainly there's a grieving that's appropriate, but there's a promise with it, a hope that good things are still going to come out of it. God is, God is all about redeeming painful situations. It says, those who hope in me will not be disappointed. That's true. That's true. And it's true for you this Christmas. If you find yourself confused in a dark place, lost, in, in, you know, overwhelmed, it says, you put your hope in God, you will not be disappointed. Second thing we can give God is we give God our fervent pursuit. I mean, I love these guys who, I mean, talking about fervent pursuit, they went their way. Well, we know that way was like a thousand miles. That's a, could you imagine that? I mean, they've got businesses, they've got families. They're, we're going on this thousand mile journey. They probably didn't know it was a thousand miles at front. They're just following a star. And it takes them all that time. Fervent pursuit, fervent pursuit. Some of you were pursuing God years ago, but things have happened. Challenges have come. Doubts surface that weren't there before. And all of a sudden, you find yourself waffling in your faith. All of a sudden, you find yourself, you're not really sure what you believe. And you're in a place of confusion, maybe some darkness. And you're really not pursuing God, and you're certainly not pursuing Him fervently. And God is calling you. He's, got, he's calling you. Your name. He's, he's thinking of you when He wants you. He's saying, follow, God's saying, follow me. And in 2023, it can be a different year for you. You can find hope and you can start pursuing God fervently. Say, God, I want to I wanna give you my very best. That's one of the reasons why we started our Pray First service, which is on Saturday mornings at 9. You come Saturday morning at 9, and from 9 to 10, it's one hour. We honor that. We honor your time in that way. But God is doing some amazing things. And I invite you to come and make that part of what you do. You know, during 21 days of prayer and fasting, we're, we're, we're encouraging the whole church to come, as many as you can possibly come, for those three Saturdays from January, during that time, January 8th through the 28th. And come and be, and maybe watch what God does. Watch what God, but that's part of fervent pursuit. In other words, I'm not going to just keep doing the same thing the same way. Fervent pursuit means I need to shake things up. I need to do something different in 2023 to pursue God with more clarity, with more passion. Yet a time is coming, Jesus says, and now has come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is seeking you. He's seeking you. He's looking for people that who will come and, 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 and pursue me passionately and fervently and then also the bible says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart so it's it's both god's seeking you he wants you to seek him and watch watch what god does that's an incredible gift and then thirdly is we can give god our worship we give god our worship these wise men certainly did they bowed down and they worshiped him that's more than just 15 minutes every sunday singing a few songs Worship is an attitude of our heart where we go, God, you're, fir- you're first in my life. What does that mean? What does that look like? Well, the, that's actually been a discussion for years. The, the lawgiver, the law writers, the uh, lawyers and the Pharisees of Jesus' day, they were talking about, you know, there were 613 laws in the Old Testament. They said, which one is most important? They were discussing that and they decided to bring that question to Jesus and he actually responds and points to this idea of worship. He says, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, of all the commandments, the 613 laws, which is the most important? The most important one, Jesus says, is this. Oh, should I move forward? (laughs) All right, here we go. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. That's what worship looks like. I mean, you're putting God first. I love God. He's my priority. Knowing that when you put God first, everything else works out better. Whenever you put God first in, in, in your life, you're saying, God's got to come first. This is the gift that we can give God. Give him our hope. Give him our, pe- per- our fervent and passionate pursuit. Give him our worship. And it's all of those. There's something that each one of us can give. All of those take a decision. You have to decide. Am I w-? And this is the moment of decision. You know, it's interesting when you read the Bible, moments of decision are always super important. I mean, you see this over and over again. One of my favorites is in John chapter 3. Nicodemus, this wise guy, this wise man is talking to Jesus, and he, he goes right for the moment of decision. Hey, you have to make a decision. Are you going to follow me? And whenever we postpone that decision, we're presuming on God's grace. We're assuming we'll be around. We're assuming God will talk to us and move on us again. There's a lot of assumptions there. That's why in the moment, there's no substitute for that. Hebrews 4 says, today is the day of decision. When this is the moment, when God's speaking to you, he's moving on you, you're going into a new year. Maybe you're in darkness. Maybe you're in confusion. Maybe some of these things that we've been talking about apply to you. And God has been stirring and saying, you know what? You don't have to stay in the same place you've been. So let's go. How do you decide? Well, it's in prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Would you bow your heads? Close your eyes. Just give this. This is an important time. God has been speaking to some of you. Moving on you. Asking you to give him your hope. To give him your fervent pursuit. To give him your worship. God, I thank you for Legacy Sunday. That what we do today, if we're living for you, it will be remembered. For honoring you in the right way. So God, empower this church to make a difference in people's lives. Both here and around the world. God, I ask that you anoint this church. That we would go on mission every day to change the world. Lord, I ask that you would multiply the offering. What we, whatever, whatever you put on people's hearts, we believe that will be enough. I ask that through the offering, Lord, that more people would find Jesus. The hurting would be healed. Buildings would be built. Students would be trained. The gospel would go forth. Now this morning, God has been stirring on some of your hearts. Maybe you don't know, God, maybe you're in a confused place or a dark place, a painful place. But you are only a heartfelt prayer away from things changing forever. So I want to invite you to pray with me. That's your next step. If that's you, you're saying, you know what, I need to come close to God. I need to put my hope in Him. I need to pursue Him. I need to worship Him. Then I'm going to ask you to pray along with me. This is your moment. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm going to ask you, if that's you, you're saying, Andy, I want to pray with you. I I want to make that decision. Then I'm going to ask you boldly, right where you're at, Just let me know by putting your hand up so I can see it. Say, I'm going to pray with you. Count me in on that prayer. Would you do that? Bless you. Okay, I see you in the back. Yep, on the side. Bless you. Okay, it's not too late. This is your, don't go into the next year feeling far from God, feeling like you're you're not worthy, you're unredeemable. That's not true. Online, some of you, you need to pray with me as well. Let's do that right now. Would you pray? Say, dear God, today is my day. Forgive me for dumb things I've done, sinful things I've done. Would you 
Say this, say, God, break the proud spirit in me that resists you. I don't even know why I do it. I know you want me to do something, and my first response is, and almost instinctively, is just to resist it. God says that's pridefulness. You say, God, break that pridefulness. I give you permission. I want to humbly serve you. Would you say, Holy Spirit, come, empower me. Renew my mind. Empower me to live a life that is worthy of you. Would you say, God, help me to be part of a body. I don't want to be a lone ranger Christian. Help me to be part of a body where I can serve alongside, be encouraged, encourage others. pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Would you I'll just congratulate those who you know make a decision for Christ, say hey, I'm coming back to Christ. I need you in this. We want to continue to pray for you. This is a journey that involves prayer. And so, as I said, in January, it's going to be all about prayer. So we I hope you come pray to expecting God to move in some incredible way. Also, let us know this morning so we can begin the, your prayer journey with you. Uh, on the Connect card, those are the little tabs uh, in front of you. Also, the QR code uh, leads you right to the same information. You can let us know that you made a prayer, uh, a, a decision of faith today. You can also let us know any prayer uh, decision that you, um, any prayer, any prayer, any way we can pray for you, okay? You can put that in the clear boxes on the way out. Your next step also is in Growth Trek. If you've not done that, uh, right after this service, we'd love to see you in Growth Trek. Well, what we're going to do now is that legacy offering I mentioned to you. Uh, so the ushers can come forward. Uh, we're going to take the, uh, if you want to give cash or check you haven't given and you, you come prepared for that, uh, this is a way to do that. Watch our year in review while we do the offering, okay? Awesome. I love, I love doing church with you. God's put together an incredible team. Let's pray for our offering. Would you stand with me? Pray for the offering we just took. I, also, it's the first Sunday of the month. You know, we like to pray over you, over your finances, those who support Vineyard, the vision and the mission of our church. We're so thankful for you. Let's do that. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give towards these three lanes, to invest in the young people, to invest in the missions local and abroad and also for uh, the, the needed elevator, the lobby that we're doing here so that we can better help people to know God, better help people to find freedom, better help people to make a difference and to discover their purpose. Lord, I thank you for each person who gives. Lord, protect them, provide for them. We know you are the great provider. You're the one who sustains us. 
Lord, I pray for increased blessing. Let us be uh, blessed so that we can even be more generous. And so, Father, I pray that you rebuke the devourer, you cause what we have to last longer and uh, so that we can be a great witness to your faithfulness. We thank you for this, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together.